The perception of weak and failed states perhaps changed most dramatically in the international image after September 11, 2001, when the second poorest country in the world became the foundation for the most significant strike that we have ever had on U.S. territory. And after that, there was an emergence not only of a reassessment of U.S. national security strategy, but global strategies. In the U.S., our national security strategy of 2002 said that America is threatened less by conquering states than we are by failing ones. In 2004, the U.S. government decided to set up an office that was dealing especially directly with this issue of weak states and conflict and what to do in stabilization and reconstruction issues. This wasn't just a U.S. issue. We saw similar trends emerging in the U.K. and Canada and France and Germany. At the U.N., there was the creation of a peace-building commission because of a sense that these weak and failing states actually presented a significant threat to the international community. Yet, despite that attention, we still have not developed a very clear understanding of what these states are or how we prepare to deal with them or how we deal with responses to failure in some of these states. You would think that, in fact, if we say in our national security strategy that perhaps we are threatened more by failed states and conquering ones, we would understand what are those principal weak and failed states and have strategies to address them. Yet at the same time, if one were to ask the United States government, do we have an official position of what the principal failed and weak states would be, the answer would be no which, of course, the next question would be, what is the strategy then to deal with this greatest threat which we have just put on the national security agenda? And the answer, of course, would be we don't have one because we haven't clearly identified what those states are. The reason I think it's important to understand, underscore this context is that it reinforces why it is so important to undertake this exercise that our colleagues uh, Susan Rice and Stuart Patrick have undertaken today. They also get into yet another conundrum, one where we have learned that weak states are weak because they lack local ownership for an indigenous strategy and local leadership for how to develop themselves. They are weak in their governance and in their leadership. And we have learned over time that simply throwing money in environments like this can result in a misuse of those funds and zero impact. Yet at the same time, to simply look at these states, given what we've learned about their interconnections with international and transnational security threats, would be irresponsible. And so we have to have a better understanding of what those states are and what the drivers of weakness might be in order to be able to develop the strategy and tools that are necessary to be able to deal effectively with these problems.
right now we've had a very ad hoc approach to dealing with the problems of state weakness and, uh, and uh, state failure. Um, we you know, made progress on, we as a U.S. government and the, and the international community in a sense, a lot of progress on, um, on uh, post-conflict reconstruction or at least beginning to get some of those um, pieces together. Um, you know, I think that um, this points to the analysis, although we, we didn't really get into it, points to a new approach to uh, how to deal with, um, with uh, state weakness and, uh, and its various manifestations. Um, uh, we've never, in, as, a, as a U.S. government, made a commitment to prevention. Um, it's a bit like the weather people talk about it, but nobody does anything about it. it, it there's no locus uh, for conflict prevention. Um, there's been an effort to try, to some degree, with the uh, Office of the Coordinator of Reconstruction and Stabilization to try to include that in, in, in the mandate, but there is no place where that's being done. Um, I think we have to start begin um, to develop some tools in terms of thinking about uh, development aid and policy um, in a different context than we normally have, particularly when it comes to dealing with the most fragile countries where you're, you often don't get an interlocutor. But then I think we have to look very much beyond development aid and look at um, issues of sort of broad-based security sector reform, not simply training up militaries, but actually how one goes about inculcating uh, a, a tradition of uh, civilian control and respect uh, over the military that we would have in this country. Um, there are, um, in general, and I've written some of this with my, my colleague uh, Casey Brown, um, uh, is the importance of having a whole-of-government approach uh, within the U.S. government to try to bring the various instruments of uh, of policy to bear on the security side. 